I think when things are presented as art, they're allowed to sometimes say things that aren't you know, so well spoken in the political sphere. Equally, art can be kind of sidelined. People can go, oh, that's just art, it doesn't really matter. I think it always walks that line. In my work, I think there's always an element of activism. It's what I'm interested in. I care about the state of the world, and so it's kind of impossible for that not to appear in the work. The first time we created The Drone Shadow was a friend and I in London. We were really interested in the subject, um, but we were really aware of how we had no visual idea of what these things were like. We couldn't imagine what it would be like to actually stand next to one, and just how big they were. So we decided to literally just draw one out. So in a car park in my studio in London, with bits of chalk and bits of string, we just sketched out a one-to-one -one outline of one of these things, just to get an immediate visual sense of what they're like. The drone here is a Reaper drone. It's a slightly larger one than the one we drew first, but it's one that's in use in theatres of war all around the world now, and outside in undeclared conflicts as well. I think so many of our contemporary technologies are invisible. Uh, whether that's the internet or, you know, this idea of the cloud as something kind of magical and distant and invisible. That means that it's very hard for us to understand how they work. And if we don't understand how they work, then we can't critique them. We can't have a proper full discussion about them. So a lot of my work is about making those technologies visible in some way uh, in order that we can start a discussion around them. Dronestagram is a project that uses journalistic sources, particularly the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, who track CIA drone assassination programs. So when there are drone strikes in undeclared theatres of war, like Pakistan and the Yemen and Somalia, no official news is released about these uh, from the military or from governments. So journalists track these. But it's still quite hard to get a real on-the-ground understanding of what this involves. So Dronestagram is a project that tries to visualise the landscapes where this is occurring. It's very strange in this day and age that we have no sense of the battlefields on which our wars are being fought. You know, for 200 years we've had journalists on the battlefield sending back reports. That doesn't happen anymore. But at the same time we've built technologies, you know, like digital maps, Google Maps, that allow you to see the whole world on your phone. So I wanted to use those technologies to make visible the contemporary battlefields, these drone strikes. And then I upload them to the social media services that we use every day, like Instagram and Twitter because those are the places that we spend our time now and where we expect to get a glimpse of, of what we sort of imagine to be the real world. The whole history of kind of the advancement of society, essentially, has been founded on having a fully informed populace. Uh, if people don't really understand these technologies, then they have no political agency. You know, they are not able to act in society in the fullest way possible. So I think it's just a basic social responsibility to try and understand these technologies better in order that, you know, if people want to know more, if, if they want to be more engaged, then, then they have the opportunity to do so. Otherwise, they, they remain completely disengaged. So it's the job of artists and critics and, and the media and kind of everyone, really, to look at ways of presenting technology to make people understand that it's founded in the society that we live in. It's not some kind of remote, separate, digital world that has no bearing on our own.